Hello everyone, in this episode we're going to talk about strictly competitive games and security strategies. So don't forget, throughout this episode we will focus on two-player games. All right. The reason is, well, you'll see probably in a minute, all the definitions are tailored for two-player games. They, they're not really well-defined if there are more than two players. All right, so first of all, what do we mean by strictly competitive game? And then I'm going to define what we mean by uh, uh, security strategies. So here's the definition of strictly competitive game. Um, the formal definition may look a bit confusing, but actually it's highly intuitive. Uh, so a two-player game is called strictly competitive if the following is true for any two profiles, strategy profile, S, S prime. So these are strategy profiles. This is like S1, S2. This is S1 prime, S2 prime. All right. Uh, so for any two profiles, um, so if player one's payoff is higher in S in comparison to S prime, well, then player two's payoff should be higher in S prime uh, in comparison to S. Or this is if and only if. Put differently, if player two's payoff is higher in S prime in comparison to S, then player one. Uh, player one's payoff should be higher in S in comparison to S prime. So basically this if and only if statement means uh, these two players preferences are uh, diametrically opposed, completely opposite of each other. So if player one prefers one strategy profile uh, to another one, well then uh, the other player should have completely opposite preferences. Uh, the second player should prefer the second uh, strategy profile over the first one. Okay, so let's apply this notion in, uh, on this simple example. So this is a two by two game, uh, two players, each player has two strategies, up and down for player one, left and right for player two. So take any two strategy profile, uh, for example, let's suppose this is S, UL is S, and DR is S prime. So from S to S prime, you see that player one's payoff is decreasing, from 4 to 2. However, player 2's payoff is increasing. So uh, that means player 1 prefers UL to DR, but player 2 prefers DR to UL. So just the opposite. Well, this is true for any profile, uh, strategy profile. For example, DL70 versus, I don't know, UR. So you're going to see player 1 prefers D over R, right? Because seven is higher than one. However, player two prefers UR over DL, all right? So any two profile you pick, you'll see that players' uh, preferences over uh, profiles are, are, are completely opposite. All right, if this is the case, well, then we call these games strictly competitive. Well, competitiveness comes from the fact that uh, the preferences of those players are, uh, are diametrically opposed, or, or, or completely opposite. Um, and, and strictness basically comes from the fact that, uh, you know, nobody uh, is sort of indifferent between two strategy profiles. So they have strict ordering over the uh, uh, strategy profiles. All right. Um, well, b by the way, in fact, if you rank the strategy profiles for player one, uh, for him, uh, 7 is the highest, so meaning DL is the best strategy profile, and then UL is the second best strategy profile, then DR is the third best strategy profile, and the worst strategy profile is UR, right? However, if you look at the second player's uh, preferences over the strategy profiles, it has to be completely opposite of this, but let's check. The second player's worst, uh, I'm sorry, the best payoff is three. And so UR is the best, which was the worst of player one. And then uh, the second best is DR, which was the second worst. All right. And then the third best is, is UL, which was the second best for player one. And then the worst is, as you see, the, the, the zero or DL, which was the first best for player one. So once I have this uh, diametrically opposed uh, preferences over strategy profiles, well, then this game is uh, a strictly competitive game. All right. Maybe it's easier to uh, sort of uh, understand, uh, I mean, make this comparison in a, in a table like this. 
All right, uh, so now we're going to define security strategies. Well, the security strategies are actually the ones that evaluate the worst case scenario, in a sense, all right? So what do we mean? So we're going to define a function, okay? W-I-S-I. So W-I means, well, the worst strategy for player I, given, uh, I'm sorry, this is the sort of a worst uh, payoff uh, for a player I, given that he is playing a strategy SI. So the question is the following. What is the worst payoff player, can, player I can get, all right, if he is playing a strategy SI, all right? So when I choose a strategy, what is the worst thing that's going to happen to me? I want to know that, all right? So I'm, I'm basically uh, looking at the worst case scenario. Well, what does that mean? That means... Uh, the, the worst case scenario, basically, because there are two players, uh, this is the second player, the opponent of player I, so we call him or her SJ, uh, or J, I'm sorry. So that means this the worst case uh, payoff is basically the minimum of the payoff function of player I's payoff function, given that he is playing SI, and then we minimize this payoff by choosing SJ. All right, so what, you have to give yourself a moment to think about this description, all right? Uh, once you think it is clear, well, then let's jump to the example, all right? So let's see. For example, what is w, uh, W1, uh, I'm, I'm looking for particularly for player one, and S1 is, let's say, U. So what is the worst payoff player one can get if he is playing you. Well, kind of simple, right? So he's playing you. The payoff he's going to get is either four or one. What is the worst he can get? Well, it's one, right? So that's it. Okay? So once again, try to understand this. The, the payoff of player one, when he plays as one, which is you, so this UI is either 4 or 1. I mean, it takes the value 4 or 1 depending on S2. S2 here is left or right. But which one, which, is it left or is it right that minimizes this payoff? Well, it's clearly right because 1 is less than 4. So therefore, uh, this WI is equal to the minimum value of this payoff function, which is 1. So similarly, um, well, let's again look at player 1. What is his worst payoff if he plays D instead, all right? Well, here, his payoff is either 7 or 2. Clearly, his payoff will never be 4 or 1 because he's playing D. So what is the worst? Well, in the, the, the worst can occur only if his opponent plays R. We're not asking the question whether R is rational or not, whether R is Nash or not. Okay, here, we're not asking these questions. We're asking what is the worst possible outcome. And clearly here, the worst possible outcome for player one is two, all right? So keep going. What is W2 uh, left? So if player two plays left, well, well, the payoff he can get is either one or zero. The worst he can get is zero. And W2R is uh, he can get three or two, and the worst he can get is two. So this is exactly how we calculate the uh, the worst payoffs. So be careful here when we uh, define the worst payoff. Here all the strategies are in pure strategies, okay? All right, now we're going to define security strategy. And we denote it by SI, um, a, a lower bar, all right? It basically is like sort of the, uh, uh, the, the strategy that is guaranteed the worst possible payoff in this game, all right? Um, so a strategy SI lower bar, which is your one of one of player I strategies, is called a security strategy if this SI lower bar, lower bar solves uh, the maximization problem. All right. So what are we maximizing here? We are maximizing here the WI SI by choosing SI. What does that mean? That means the following. Player one is going to look at his W. I, right? This is W1. So he has W1, so WI, so I is equal to 1. So he's going to say, look, my worst case payoff uh, is, is, is 1 if I uh, play U, right? This is S1. 
and my worst payoff is 2 if I play D. So the question is, obviously, uh, I cannot uh, change this, right? I mean, uh, this, this worst case payoff depends on what my opponent does. However, I am the one who's, I mean, as let's say I am player one, I am the one who's going to determine whether to choose U or D, right? So I don't have to choose U if it gives me less payoff than D, which it, it does. So here, how I compare U and D normally, right, the U, gives me four or one payoff, D gives me seven or two payoff. So sort of I am highly pessimistic guy. Uh, when I sort of think of choosing you, I assume that uh, the worst thing is gonna happen, which is one. However, if I choose D or if I play D, uh, again, I assume that the worst thing is, is going to happen. And so, I, uh, so in that case, uh, if I play D, I believe that I'm gonna get two. So the question is, if I am a pessimistic guy, always thinking that the worst thing is gonna to happen to me, should I play U or D? Well, obviously it makes sense to play D then, because D is giving me two payoff, but U is giving me one payoff. Or uh, W1U is one, W1D is two, so I maximize uh, my W function by choosing my strategy. All right, so that's why, so whatever the stra that strategy solving this maximization problem, in this example, it's D, we call it security strategy. All right, so the security strategy of player one is D. What about player two? So player two, um, if she plays uh, L, she's gonna get zero. If she plays R, she's gonna get two. Well, what is the maximum, what is the maximizing strategy? Well, it's R. So therefore, security strategy, strategy for player two is R. All right, uh, that's it. So uh, we call this notation uh, maximum SI, WISI as the player I security level. So in this game, for example, player one security level is two. And in this game, uh, a player two security level is two again. All right. So uh, philosophically, I mean, what the heck all those me really mean? Well, kind of simple. I mean, uh, suppose that this guy is, as I said, sort of pessimistic guy, always think the worst uh, worst thing is going to happen. So what he is trying to do is to, he's trying to minimize the damage he, 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 he may get. So therefore, uh, if you think this, uh, analyzing a game like this, in a game, uh, for, for example, this, uh, this game, uh, whether his opponent is rational, irrational, crazy, uh, whatever his opponent is, uh, maybe he, he's expert on playing this game, maybe he has no idea how to play his game. But the thing is, the worst payoff player one is gonna get in this game is two. By playing something else, he can actually get uh, something better, all right? So the outcome can be better, but the worst thing he can sort of ensure himself is, is payoff of two by playing D. All right, and symmetrically, the worst payoff player two can ensure for herself is a payoff of two by playing R, all right? Very well. Um, sometimes instead of writing, oh, uh, not writing, and sometimes we call this, and uh, let me give you the notation, the security payoff, payoff is sometimes instead of denoting by max WISI, we denote it as follows, uh, max SI in SI, min SJ in SJ, UI SI SJ, all right? Okay, let's think about this example now. I'm going to find the uh, security strategy for player one and security payoff for player one. You can do the same exercise for player two, obviously. So, uh, player one's, the worst case uh, payoff, if he plays U, is what? So when player one plays U, uh, what is the worst payoff? 
uh, for him. Well, it, is it three? Is it one? Or is it five? Well, clearly it's one, right? So therefore, if player two plays M, uh, his payoff will be uh, the minimum. And so therefore, W1U is equal to one. Okay, what about W1M? So when he plays M, the worst payoff he can get is, is it zero? Is it minus five or is it zero? Well, it's minus five. Very well. If he plays C, however, he can get five or minus two or three. And so the W1C is equal to minus two, right? This is the worst. And then if he plays D, however, W1D, uh, his worst case uh, payoff is, is it three, zero, seven? Well, zero. So the question is, what strategy SI maximizes uh, uh, W1, W1 uh, uh, SI? So here SI is either U or M or C or D. Well, this is M. So which one maximizes this, pay, uh, you know, this payoff structure? Well, clearly U. So therefore, the security strategy is U, all right? And the security payoff is uh, one, okay? Um, so, by the way, let's check if this has anything to do with Nash equilibrium. I mean, in general, uh, you know, the security strategy, security payoff in general, and Nash equilibria have nothing to do. But let's check. So here, if player one and two plays U, the best response is clearly C. Here, the best response is uh, U, and here, the best response is D. All right. So consider the second player's best response. Here, the best response is L. Here, the best response is M. And here, the best response is uh, of, uh, L. And here, the best response is, well, there are two best responses, M and R. So here in this game, there are one, two, three pure strategy Nash equilibria, M, L, is one of them, CL the other one, and DR is the third one. And so here, as you, by the way, this game is not uh, a strictly competitive game, all right? Meaning you can define security strategies, security payoff for any two-person game. It doesn't have to be strictly competitive. We're gonna come back to the strictly competitive uh, games and, and there we're gonna say something about how Nash and, and security strategies are related. But once again, security strategies can be found in any game, in any two-person game. And this is one example. This is not, again, this is not a strictly competitive game. All right. Uh, well, well, why is so? Well, because, for example, if you compare this strategy profile with this pro profile, meaning CR to DR, well, you'll see both p uh, players are better off. So they, they both prefer DR to CR. So their preferences are not uh, completely opposite. Okay? So that's it. Just one example is, so that just one counterexample uh, is enough to show that this game is not strictly competitive. All right. So here there, as I said, there are three Nash equilibria, zero, seven, five, five, seven, seven. Uh, two of them gives player one, two of them give player one uh, a very good payoff, five and seven. And the one Nash equilibrium gives the payoff zero. All right. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, this is not a Nash equilibrium because here, if you look at the, I don't know why this zero is underlined. Oh, this is probably because uh, I underline it. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That's my bad. So <laughs> that's sorry. So let's check again. Is, is, is ML Nash equilibrium? Well, it's clearly best. To, L is clearly best response to M, but M is clearly not a best response to L uh, because the best response is there C. So therefore, 0, 7 is not an Nash equilibrium, okay? Uh, what about this uh, CL? Well, 5, I'm sorry, L is a best response to C. Is C a best response to L? Yes, it is. Very good. So CL is one of the Nash. Is this a Nash equilibrium? Um, yes, it is because uh, both D and R, they are best response to each other. So in this game, there are uh, two, I'm sorry, uh, Nash equilibrium in pure strategies, and both of them give player one a payoff higher than uh, his security payoff. But once again, uh, the security payoff 
uh, in general is, is not related or a security strategy is not related to the Nash equilibrium. Security strategy says what is the worst payoff a player can guarantee himself. And in this game, it's one. All right? Meaning if you play this game uh, as a player one, get something less than one, uh, there's something absolutely uh, weird going on with you. Uh, all right, uh, because you could actually do much better than zero, much better than minus one. You could do, you could do one, all right? Uh, player two can never force you to get a payoff less than one in this game. How so? Well, choose your security strategy, which is you, right? If you choose your security strategy, here you go. You're gonna get either one or three or five. So. You, you guarantee at least one, but maybe you're going to get three or five. Who knows? Okay, so that's the idea of security strategies. Okay, guys, so um, what we can do, we can extend the idea of worst case scenario analysis to mixed strategies. Remember the security strategies, the security payoff, they are always calculated by using pure strategies only. What if uh, we can extend this idea like the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. So let's suppose a mixed strategy, we're going to denote it sigma i uh, lower bar uh, for player i is called max min strategy. All right. Instead of calling it security strategy, we call it max min strategy. If that strategy, that mixed strategy solves exactly the similar functional form. It, it maximizes, all right, this, this mixed strategy maximizes the WI function, which is the minimum payoff player I can get when he plays sigma I, all right? Um, so the strategy, the mixed strategy that solves this problem is called max min strategy, and the payoff level that corresponds to this level uh, is, is, is called max min payoff or max min value or max min level, all right? So the security strategy is a strategy, but it, it identifies uh, the strategy where player I can be certain to achieve in a game uh, at minimum, all right? So it's the worst, the worst payoff player I can guarantee himself in a game. Uh, the min-max strategy, however, identifies the lower bound that player I can achieve in expectation. All right. So what does that mean? Uh, the the, the, the min-max uh, strategy uh, guarantees a lower bound in expectation. So uh, that means the realized payoff can be lower than that or higher than that. But in, but, but in expectation, that's the minimum payoff. Uh, you can guarantee. So in any game, therefore, the min-max payoff can be equal to the security payoff, but it can never be less than security payoff. Remember, security payoff is the least you can get. The min-max payoff is usually strictly higher than security payoff in any game. All right? If you remember, I said the security strategies, the max-min strategies and payoffs, these notions are defined for any two-person game, all right? Well, what about, uh, you know, or what is special about uh, strictly uh, competitive games? Well, the next theorem is basically relates the Nash equilibrium with the security payoffs and the max mean payoffs and strategies. Uh, and this result, however, is true if the game is strictly competitive, all right? so. Let's read the theorem. So let's suppose there's a game. It's a two-player game uh, and it's strictly competitive. All right. So it's a two-player game and it's strictly competitive. And there's one more thing that this game has a Nash equilibrium. And let's denote the Nash equilibrium S star. So S star is a strategy profile. All right. Uh, so it's basically uh, consists of two strategies, S1 star, S2 star. All right. Okay. So once again, this game is a two-person game. Uh, it's a strictly competitive, so the uh, agents, players rank the profiles uh, a completely opposite uh, way. And then third, there is a Nash equilibrium. Let's denote the Nash equilibrium strategy profile as S star. Okay, then SI star, so each of those strategies 
are actually security strategies for player I. So the Nash equilibrium strategies are also uh, the security strategies. All right, these are the worst thing they can get in this game. All right. Furthermore, each player's security payoff and max min payoffs are the same. Remember, I said in general, max min payoffs are greater than or equal to uh, security payoff. But in this game, they are the same. And finally, those S1 stars and S2 stars, these are also the max min strategy. Meaning, if you look at mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, in a sense, or sort of strategies in mixed uh, sense, uh, I'm sorry, uh, what, what the heck does that mean? Uh, mixed uh, strategies, well then, uh, the, uh, the, 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 <clears throat> the worst case scenario analysis are not gonna change, all right? Because the max min strategies and the security strategies are the same. Max min payoffs and the security strategies, uh, uh, payoffs, I'm sorry, security payoffs are the same, okay? All right, so the next thing is, what about those security strategies uh, and rationalizability. Can I say anything about, for example, uh, each security strategy is a rationalizable strategy? I mean, is it possible that in some games uh, security strategies are strictly dominated? The, the answer is yes, actually, it is possible. There are some games, two-person games, where security strategy is actually strictly dominated. All right, so here in this uh, game, uh, what is the security strategy for player one? Remember, uh, the player one's w, uh, W1U is, meaning what is the worst payoff player one can get if he plays U? Is it six or is it minus two? Well, it's minus two, obviously. What is the worst payoff he can get if he plays D instead? Well, is it uh, four, is it two? Well, it's two, clearly. So, therefore, what strategy maximizes W? Well, it's D. So, therefore, the security strategy, security strategy for player one, for player one, is equal to D, and his security level is two. However, D is, in fact, a strictly dominated strategy. I mean, or let's put it this way, in this game, uh, the rationalizable, rationalizable strategy profile, the only rationalizable strategy profile is UL. Uh, for this, I need iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, right? Here, for player one, there's no strict domination at first, right? Because six is higher than four, but two is higher than minus two. But if you look at player two, for player two, left is strictly dominating R, right? So R is dominated because zero is worse than four, one is worse than five, so a rational player should never play R. Okay, well then, in this case, uh, the remaining strategies for player two is just L, right? Well, but same for player two, the decision is now much easier. Is it U or D? Which one is more rational? Or, well, I mean, clearly U gives a higher payoff. So therefore, D is not really rational. So that means if you apply the iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, the only remaining strategy uh, for player one is U, and, and for player two is L. So that means D is not rational strategy uh, in, uh, for player one. However, as we just argued, it's a security strategy. So uh, why is that so? Well, that's kind of, well, I mean, th that, that conclusion is kind of obvious. Uh, well, of course, because the security strategies looks at the game without eliminating the uh, uh, dominated strategies of the opponent. So here's exactly what happens, right? So this minus two scares him a lot. And so for that reason, player one plays D as a secure strategy. But in fact, R and therefore minus two, I'm sorry, R is not a really a rational strategy for player two. So therefore, player one shouldn't really worry about this minus two. But once again, the concept of uh, security strategies uh, uh, do not eliminate those uh, non-rational 
uh, uh, strategies or dominated strategies. For that reason, um, it's, it's kind of, I mean, what do you expect? It's, it's kind of natural that there might be some games where the security strategy is in fact not, ra not uh, rationalizable. All right, so it's, it's, it's not a big surprise. Um, so that's it.